Hi, Joel. This is Carolina from Sade Adventures. I'm hopping on here to go through that September itinerary for Peru. I think it's just easier if we go through it together and that way you can reach out to me with any questions or anything that hop, pops up. But going through it together, you will understand the logistics. I'm sharing my screen here. You see the itinerary and let's go through it in the next five or eight minutes. So September 8th is when you will arrive to Lima. And this is a private tour, so you can choose any date. Virtually everything in Peru is available every day, unless there's a train, uh, train schedule that requires specific times of the week. I know all of these details, so I will take care of it and build the trip around your date. So let me know what works, what doesn't. September is a beautiful season. It's right after you know the busy summer months. Our summer is Peru's winter, which means bright blue skies, crisp weather, very dry, perfect for outdoor excursions. So it's one of our favorite months to visit. So September 8th, you arrive in Lima. My team meets you at the airport, state adventure sign with your name on it, and a private car and driver will take you to your hotel that we handpicked for you. And of course, we can make any tweaks to the hotels. So if you like a different style of properties, or if you want to upgrade or downgrade, save a few bucks here or there, let me know. And I have an array of hotels that I have inspected myself or one of my team members have done so. We like to update our hotel list um, once a year at least so that we know what's going on in the properties that we offer. I have personally been to Peru three times uh, with my family, with my children, with my parents. So I know how to arrange excursions that make everybody happy in the group. So uh, I look forward to hearing more about what interests you and that way we can make the trip more personable for your uh, you know, adventure. I chose Ibera Miraflores because this is a new hotel. I was just there in February. Uh, it's a great location right on the ocean, uh, right by Larcomar um, uh, Shopping Center. The, the Lover's Park is right outside and has a great rooftop. So it just really feels uh, like a great place to unwind after your travels. And you're going to be there for two nights. And then the following morning after breakfast, which is those BL or BLD, that stands for the meals that are already included in your package. Uh, so we like to always include breakfast and taxes at the hotels. We include some lunches when it's fun to include them at a special place like eating inside a museum or go into an indigenous community and eating with them. And sometimes we include dinners, especially if you're in the middle of nowhere and there are not a lot of options, then we take care of your dinner so that you don't have to worry about it. So on this day, September 9th, we will show you the best of Lima. And the way we do that is we combine highlights of Lima and food of Lima. So you're going to go to ruins, you're going to go to the ocean, you're going to go to museums, but you're going to have lunch inside the museum, you're going to have drinks by the ocean, you're going to maybe have a milk shakes or um, taste some ice cream or have snacks inside the uh, on the at the restaurant inside the ruins so you're going to eat your way through Lima which is the best way to do it because Lima is known for its food and that's a great way to experience this part of Peru and then September 10th off we go to Cusco so we take you to the airport you fly one hour to Cusco and now we're in high altitude so what we do is take you from Cusco to Sacred Valley which is 2,000 feet lower it really helps acclimate um, easier, makes you breathe easier. You know, you want to take it easy in high altitude because it only takes time to make your body acclimated. So we make sure you are doing it at the lowest possible level, and that's in the Sacred Valley. And on the way to your hotel, so we don't use a whole waste, so we don't waste a whole day on just travel. We visit sites that don't require strenuous activities, but are really beautiful, like the Salineras, which is um, ink and salt farms that are still worked by the indigenous communities. We go to Maras and Marai Laboratories. We go to Iskai Maras, which is a farm-to-table restaurant that's reservation only, that they open the doors for us uh, for a beautiful high-end experience in the mountains. And then we also visit Chinchera on this day, which is a very colorful village known for textiles and um, and weavings. And then you go Inca, then you go to Inca Terra Hacienda Urubamba. It's a really nice hotel in the Sacred Valley. Beautiful location. They really bring in the colors and weavings and wood carvings of the local community.
activities into the rooms. So you wake up and you definitely feel like you're in Peru. You're going to be here for two nights so that you can acclimate properly and visit some sites around Sacred Valley because, of course, there's indigenous communities and ruins and Inca sites, lots to see and do in the Sacred Valley. And besides all the activities like um you know, river rafting and kayaking and hiking and horseback riding. All of those things are available here as well. So let me know if any of those interest you and we can kind of pepper them into the itinerary uh, along the sites we already have included. So on that second day, we're going to take you to Oyataytambo, which is a huge uh, complex of ruins in the valley. And then Miss Minai, which is a very special community that we sponsor here in, in uh, Sacred Valley. Uh, in Saint Adventures. So uh, every time you somebody visits there, um, they get sponsorship from us. And also it gives you a glimpse into the life of the local communities. There's not gonna be busloads of people there. You're most likely going to be the only visitor. So you get to meet a shaman and see how their life is. Fabulous day. And they um, create a nice lunch for you there as well. And that's this community uh, on day four. Now, day five, we're ready to go to Machu Picchu. So September 12th, we're going to pick you up, take you to the train station. The train is the Vista Dome. That's the glass dome ceiling uh, train. You arrive at the train station. We take care of your luggage. So you just take your day pack for the one night in Machu Picchu. Our driver will take your large suitcases to Cusco so you can reunite with the bags later. Don't worry about all of these logistics. We take care of them for you so there's no stress. And then also another part of the logistics is when you get off that train in Machu Picchu, there's like 500 people getting off the train. We make sure that our guide and our porter waits for you. So the porter takes your little overnight day pack, takes it to the hotel in Machu Picchu, and you can just continue right to the ruins with your guide. It makes a huge difference because you're not trying to find your front desk and lobby and hotel and get check into your room all before trying to get to the ruins, which a lot of people will be doing. So we avoid all of that chaos and go to the ruins for a beautiful tour, lunch, and then check into your hotel and rest because we want to spend the night in Machu Picchu. And we've included one night at the Inca Terra El Mapi, which is a great little boutique hotel. The reason we want to spend the night here is because we can rise the next morning and see sunrise at the ruins. So you wake up in the morning, there's a 7 a.m. and a 10 a.m. entry. Your guide meets you, you go to the shuttle together. You have another opportunity to see the ruins, photograph, uh, you know, with way less people, with different lighting, with a different climate, because this is right at the mouth of the Amazon. So it can be very foggy in the afternoons and sometimes you miss the beautiful peaks. So it's nice to have two opportunities. And also if you are hikers and want to go to the top a Huayna Picchu or a shorter version to Uchui Picchu or do another excursion around the ruins, this is the day to do that. And we will include all of those um, permits for you. The guide will come along with you. So let me know, do you enjoy um, climbing, hiking? Then Huayna Picchu will be a wonderful opportunity. Just to zoom back to the photo of Machu Picchu, this peak here is Huayna Picchu and you can climb that in the morning. And then right next to it is a smaller mountain called Uchui Picchu, and that's a less strenuous hike, and we can also do that one. After you hike, you come back to the town, you rest a little bit, and then you take an evening train to Cusco, because now we're fully acclimated, we can relax and check into our Casa Andina Premium Cusco Hotel. I stayed here a few years ago. This is a Peruvian chain called Casa Andina. Wonderful service, wonderful location. As you see, they take these old mansions and do them into a hotel. So it's a, it's a wonderful experience. And now in Cusco, we will spend the next day enjoying Cusco because now you're fully acclimated. You can walk around. Beautiful cobblestone city, lots of sites inside and outside, temples, ruins, the Saxawaman Fortress. We will do it all. Uh, and then on day eight, we will take you back to the airport. You will fly to Cusco, uh, from Cusco to Lima and fly home from there. And that's it. Your eight day trip to Peru completely private, completely customizable according to your dates, interests, needs, budgets. So just let me know what works, what doesn't, and we can tweak it further. I look forward to working with you. Happy travels.